Oh. What are you telling me? I'm good, man. How's it going? Yeah, good, bro. Jeez, nice good. shirt, man. Where, that, where you get that one from? <laughs> oh, shit, is it pajamas? Bro, this is this is the Jules got me. It's like this mad dressing gown. Oh, bro. man, that is sick. That is sick. Trust, trust George, man. Trust George to get something like that. Yeah. I need, I need something <laughs> sick like that, man. <laughs> he's got an eye for that shit. Man. Yeah, he does, man. He does, he does. I mean, uh, Jack just lives like the... He lives like a monk, basically, so... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he has no possessions. He has no worldly possessions, basically. <laughs> Good to see you, man. You're looking alive, man. Good to see you. It's been a while. I know, man. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's looking sick. Yeah, cheers, right man. I've just been playing around with it, and now I just let it just do its own thing at this point. So, nice. just can't be nice. can't be strangling it anymore, man. So just left it just be. Yeah, just let it be natural. Yeah, man. Let yeah. True. What have you been up to? You been doing much? Yeah, man. Um, what have I been doing? I'd say I've just been studying a lot. Um, mm -hmm. so studying myself, my projects. Um aligning yeah. myself a lot to the work I'm doing trying to find or what I was doing a lot was finding a deeper connection and meaning to myself and how it connects to what I'm doing right so um yeah just finding that meaning um that that, that was that was mostly it and yeah. honestly it, it it did I mean when I when I found it it gave me a lot of energy and a lot of clarity on on exactly what I'm working on, so it's just been beautiful, man. It's been very beautiful. It's been very very beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's a beautiful way to put it. Man. Like, 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 what about what about you, man? What what you been up to? I mean, last time we met was what three months ago, if not more. Must have been yeah, probably been like, probably further than that. Yeah, it was more winter time, wasn't it? Yeah. It was more winter time. I think it was like March. Oh damn! That's the thing, you know, with this whole with the world just moving the way it is, time is either dilated or like <laughs> moving slow. Everything just feels like such a short period of time. I don't know. Yeah, man, it's just uh, it's a strange construction, isn't it? It has. Yes, it is. Yeah. What have you been up to, man? Uh there's been a lot of there's been a lot of changes and progression. Yeah, so your much, end, bro. So much. So let's begin, really. So like. Obviously, we moved out of the sanctuary, um, but that was a whole journey in and of itself. So I think there was a when we probably I don't know if we knew that we was gonna we had to move out. I think we might have been we knew a month later. So that was like that was a progression. That was a that was a journey in itself. The mm. kind of the energy that that brought, you know. By the end, it was crazy, man. It was. Uh, yeah, just everything came together in perfect timing. Yeah, I, I saw I saw videos on on Instagram, especially towards the end, how it just started. It's almost like a crescendo, right? Like everything just started mm -hmm. building up. Like obviously, finally the 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 law sort of like were relaxed, so people could like sort of open up. So you had the dining table and the food. Um, yeah. You had the music events as well. Um, all, just all that stuff, man. It just looks so cool. Yeah, you had the graffiti event as well. Like that, yeah. that was pretty hard as well. The whole thing, man, just mm. just proper come come to fruition. You know, got got to the point where it's new and everyone, you know, is doing doing like the live events, doing the music events. Like it all just came through perfectly. Um, so that that was that's the beautiful thing, and you know, now the, the energy of the people is never gonna go. Yeah, I think we, we had to step away from it all as well. So then you could kind of see. The impact that we had and the impact that we that that, that yeah that yeah happened. yeah let it, let the um, ripple sort of just spread <laughs> yeah. yeah man you gotta see the highs and the lows of it and that's important um because then that shows like yeah that shows your impact that shows your value um so we just kind of take a step back from it all and now like we're just getting around to revisiting now we're just set up in the house which is cool so like um, that's been good. That's been a cool journey. Is that me and Jack were laughing yesterday? Like, so many people want to come around and just visit the house. Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys got a new place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we just got. Oh damn. Um, so yeah, people are just kind of here all the time, and the energy of the sanctuary remains. Yes, place. yes, that is sick. Yeah. Well, a yeah. trip to Bristol is in the is in the is in the it's in the calendar now for me. I need to come check out the place. Yeah, man. For real, man. Need to come so is it, is it you, Jack and George, then? 
Yeah, we just yeah. chose Musa. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, wait, you guys have got Musa as well. You basically, you basically just took the soul of the sanctuary and just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've got it right there with you guys, the orb. We've got, we've got the heartbeat, man. That is sick, man. Heartbeat. That is sick. Yeah. How are the guys doing, by the way? Yeah, they're good. They're good. They're, like, we're just kind of in that phase now. Everyone's just sort of chilling, grafting a little bit. So mm. that's what the boys are doing. Mm. Um, which is cool. Kind of, they're do, each doing their sort of individual stuff. Like, Jack's launching uh, Studio Re. So he's like doing a lot of building work um, all around, I guess, uh, helping creators, helping yeah. others in our situation to build their facility, to build their like goals, dreams. Mm. So he's doing that, which is nice, man. Um, and then George is George is kind of doing whatever he feels in, in typical George style. One, one week he's putting up tents, the next week he's working in a cafe, the next week he's doing some branding for a festival. Or yeah. George is doing. George. I know, man. He's just, he's always out and about, man. He's always nah, out and man. about. <laughs> I've never been to the sanctuary and actually seen him there once. But then yeah. whenever he comes back, it's like either like super late at night and then he's always straight onto something, straight away. Yeah. Straight away. Nah, man. I always liked the, the dynamic between you three, man. Um, obviously, that's, that's just something that. Uh, a lot of, especially when you're building a project like that, it's something that is just, you need that team, right? But then not just a team, but you need the alignment between the people. It's about understanding what your strengths are and being honest with yourself. Understand your strengths and then align that with the team. And I realize that you guys are just all like one. It's like how your head works with your arms, right? Or how your legs work with your with your brain with your brain. So it's like you guys become one big body part essentially, yeah. and realize what your strengths are. I really really like that. I love the synergy within you guys, man. It's yeah, just it's, it's stunning. It's, it's so natural. Mm. With, uh, well, fundamentally, when you got three brothers, the whole thing just becomes so fluid and natural. Mm. Mm. In the twine and chop and change, and then it's, you don't even need to have. Typical conversations such as like, I know, like, I know, I know. That you, know, <laughs> that, you that you may typically have in a regular business and stuff like that because it's it's just different levels. You know, you're coming at it with a different vibration, and then that keeps the purity of what you're doing and the essence of what you're doing. You know. Um, I was going to so, say, yeah, bro, is that's, it, that's never going to be lost. So it's definitely, it. man. Definitely not. I think that's a that's a bond that you just can't break, can you? Um, and again, the fact that you are starting to build something that is beyond you as well, I think mm. that gives you a sense of perspective and it actually brings you, I don't know, I, I think it gives you a sense of humility as well, man. Like, it's, it's, like you said, it's not just you, right? Like, the sanctuary now becomes much bigger than, than you three. Like, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's the whole community now. So um, yeah. I think it, it, gives you, it gives you a sense of humility as well where you just have to genuinely take a step back and then listen. Yeah, totally, mm. and I think that's the way it should always be. You know, always got to create something that's bigger than you. Definitely, because um, then that's how you create a legacy. That's how you create something that's long lasting. That's how, like, that's what I think your why should be divided, you know, devised from. Shouldn't be from necessarily, um, you know, from for money purposes. It's this and that. I think it should come from something deep, deep within that you. Mm. Do um, mm. because then it, it, it doesn't necessarily matter whether you achieve that it's in the pursuit of achieving that that you achieve definitely that no, I think that's a good, really good point you made there and I think again coming back to the question you asked that's that's a realisation I made for myself as well is um, I took the time off I took literally like a month off and the whole point was to realign myself to to my sense of truth because it's yeah. not just about the projects I'm working on or the, if not even about the impact because, you know, in reality, who am I? You know, like I'm just a speck of, like, you know, I'm just a grain of sand in this whole, like, massive um, mm. universe. But um, it's about, then like, reconnecting myself to myself, like finding that my real source. And, um, yeah, I, I took some time off about a month just in solitude um, to, to reflect, to read, to learn. Um, like I said, say reskill, relearn. And um, just, again... Uh, I've been taking meditation as well, man. Since speaking to you, man, uh, I think you're you're probably you're, you're you're the first guy who sort of like hammered down the importance of it, and yeah. um, I definitely I definitely I've been doing that a lot more, and and the clarity is really really good, man. It's, especially when I find when you spend time in solitude, when you've really sort of created an environment that allows you to really just be with yourself, and then be critical and listen to yourself. What I learned a lot, like I said, is just a connection back to my back to my to my real source. So now I'm coming back to the world and I feel like 
I have a sense. I I, I have re I understand my sense of purpose. I understand it. Like I know exactly what I'm doing. I know how it's connecting to the people around me. So I think that it's actually super important. It's not just about like you said the money or the impact or the benefit. It still comes down to you as an individual yourself and like mm. how exactly deep within you do you feel about the things that you're doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. and I think that's like that's, that's what I've got with my practice is this. Uh, Meditation is not necessarily a practice uh, in in and of itself to mm, do. Okay, okay, mm, to do. It's actually uh, meditation is a state. Can you be in the meditative state in life? Mm, <laughs> mm. Can you be mindful of all of your senses? Can you actually become the passive observer and the listener to your thoughts, um, or are you being guided by your by your mental stimulation? Are you being guided by your thoughts? Because that's when. Uh, Really interesting. I've been uh, listening to the Power of Now audio book. Uh, it kind of the speaks. Power of Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome book. And it uh, you know, speaks a lot on um, essentially what's what's your guidance? What's what 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 are you being guided by? Are you mm. being guided by that internal mm. voice? Are you being guided by your thought process? Essentially, the bodily vessel, mm-hmm. or are you being guided just by that um by that, uh, by that being by your consciousness? Because our same consciousness is the consciousness of a tree. It's the consciousness of all things. It's really fundamentally just life. Yes, yes, yes. You know, which is <laughs> it's just unexplainable, but we understand. It. No, no, I, of course, I get you. I get you. Um, so I guess that's where I'm at with my practice. And it actually, like I said, it takes that. It takes uh, isolation. Um, and, of course, practice meditation and connecting with others. Like, I got myself a spiritual teacher. He's incredible, man. Like, mm. just you. Mm. Um, it makes you answer things beyond your comprehension a lot of the time, and then you end up saying, "Oh, okay, I get that now," because that's this kind of makes sense. So it sort of all adds up. Um, so that's been that's been super enlightening. Like, yeah, to align all of my chakras help always kind of put me in that meditative state. I really connect me back to earth. Mm. I think mm. it's quite easy when you go into the spiritual realm to kind of go too high. And then forget that you are actually also a being of earth. True, true. No, that's that's one thing as well because um, I was discussing with a friend the other day. It's like I'm um, like now, like I'm learning now to play and play yeah. in the sense of like interacting with the world, right? Because it's like when you take go into that state, it's like you need to always keep the balance. It's like you go off there and like it can be quite, um, it can be quite. Uh, it, it can really like detach you from the world in the sense that you really you, you become. How they, I'm trying to put this in a way that, so you start to understand yourself in a sense that you start to even fall in love with yourself. So it's like, mm-hmm. so you you almost don't want to you know leave that state. You get what I mean? But then yeah, it's yeah. It, it then of, of of course it then becomes detrimental if you don't because you need to obviously interact with the world. So you need to then get yourself out of it, like I said, and it also needs to be healthy and mindful, and then you have to then mm-hmm. interact with the world, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. so and that's the balance I found. It's like if if you are not healed enough to interact with the world in a healthy way you end up causing damage to others and potentially to yourself right but then mm-hmm. if you spend too much time away you also end up causing damage to others and potentially to yourself so it's that balance yeah. is very is very interesting a really nice um in buddhism there's a really nice sort of way to describe two separate buddhas right so you've got um the buddha saka who is a buddha who kind of goes away and uh, it goes away in silence and never really retreats back and really connects to the spiritual realm. Then you've got a pragmatic Buddha, uh, Buddha who goes away into that silent realm, but then mm. also comes back into reality, and mm. let's call it the game. So it comes back into the game, but brings that knowledge. Yes, so, yes, I mean, it takes it. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, and that's, um, that's very much how I see us in that realm, you know, because we understand that um, there is this reality of life, the matrix, if you will, mm. that a lot of people... Um, subconsciously live within but when you're awake to the understanding that we do live in somewhat of a matrix and we do live in somewhat of a of course society which has certain societal norms um, but there's also more yes, <laughs> yes you need to go away you need to experience more and that more can actually just come in closing your eyes mm-hmm. and connecting back to yourself and mm-hmm. really connecting back to consciousness it's, it's, it's uh, again to touch back into Buddhism and I love how you're kind of sat within this internal wheel and you're sat in the middle and then you have certain things around it, which is the way you think, the way you live, et cetera, et cetera. So 
um, connecting to all of these different aspects and areas of life, uh, for me, is, uh, I think that is life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The way yeah. to be, you know? Yes, it's yes. The way to be. Uh, so, I hear that. Um, yeah. For me as well, because you mentioned um, having a spiritual teacher. Um, mm. I guess for me, in my own journey, it's... You become your own teacher. Yeah, I find that I teach myself a lot. I get, I, I take the approach of like research and like reading a lot of books and obviously discussing with people like you um, mm. about just like sharing ideas, right? Const um, mm -hmm. But I, I know it's super important to have a mentor. But one thing for me is like, especially growing up, uh, growing up in Christianity and seeing yeah. how a lot of a lot of it was like blind follow followership, right? Like it's like oh, there is a priest or there's a pastor and because the person, just because of the fact the person is a priest or a pastor, you have to listen to the person, right? So there wasn't much, um, well, even though this person is, uh, you know, is telling the wrong thing or the person is not even necessarily living a Christ-like life, they just follow blindly. So I guess that, that sort of created a bias in me where, and you see it a lot now as well with, you know, fake gurus and whatever you call it. There are many people out there who are like, you know, trying to be spiritual leaders. So, I think for 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 a while that made me quite skeptical towards even just or not not just skeptical but it made it harder for me to understand spiritual concepts because mm. my my the first barrier for me was that bias all right what if this person is just chatting shit what if this person is just you know mm. selling their own idea and I think it's very difficult to actually find um you know really like genuine um mentors or you know leaders who are actually going to like lead um and i know that's one thing we've discussed uh, many times and you've said how you go and you have a spiritual leader and how you go up to them and how you, how you discuss and even with your barber for example who's your mentor as well you get what i mean like mm. just just things like that i think it's super super key to have that and i feel like i'm at this stage now where i would actually like to you know meet someone like that that just just because i have so many wild ideas i just want to just this just just to shoot it at them and see what they say you get, get i mean a response to it and uh, yeah. I, I find that i'm the one who is constantly teaching at the moment so perhaps i need to be taught uh yeah. if that makes Ooh, sense be yeah because that's uh i always go into the situation of um someone is gonna know something that you don't know mm. and as soon as you don't believe that and as soon as you don't understand that um, I think that's when your arrogance is going to come in. Mm -hmm. like, it doesn't matter who it is. I could be speaking to a little six-year-old, like Rotary's brother, for instance. Mm. I'm a six-year-old kid. He's going to be able to teach me um, about Pole Patrol. <laughs> 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 that he's been watching. Yeah. So he knows stuff that I don't know. Yeah. And he's going to be like, he, he's a young kid. He can move his body in any types of ways so I can mimic some of his movements. Mm. Mm. Now he's losing limber, etc. So, yeah, I think really tapping into the understanding that as someone will always know something that you don't know but then it's we also need that level of guidance yeah you know it's like with uh with jim for instance um just to experiment and testing with your own body and you know researching and watching stuff you will always only ever get to a certain point mm -hmm. and then you can actually say you know what i'm gonna just reach out with someone who's at a higher level yeah or reach out to someone who knows more than me or reach out with something um, that I just fundamentally respect because I probably learned something from them anyway, mm -hmm. uh, and then tap into their knowledge. You know, it's it's crazy. So, and that can happen. Then things can just totally shift like that. For instance, one of my friends is big in the Cali scene. I literally did one session with him, and from that one session, I can now do a whole. Run. Yeah, I saw your videos. <laughs> it's crazy, and like, I can literally now coach people from lit from spending about half an hour with him. Mm. Is mad because uh, mm. then I like take my skills, and my knowledge, and yeah, that, that yeah, build that into something. But yeah, man, like my life totally changed when I had mentors. Mm. Every, like I can, I'm not a bit. I couldn't be a bigger advocate for getting a mentor in just in different walks and areas of life because it's, uh, yeah, it's just so much. It's a journey. It's a, it's a, it's how did you, how did you find getting a mentor then? Like, if someone was to get a mentor and they've never had one, like what? Because, like I said to you, there's this whole there's a whole fake guru thing, right? And there are people who genuinely haven't, you know, been through that, haven't really worked through their own blockages and tra trauma, for example. And, and they, they end up just putting that on the, on the other person or their, yeah, their, yeah. or their ego or arrogance on the other person. So how do you really navigate to find a mentor? Yeah. Would you say? Well, I guess the, the first thing I would then look at is, uh, and I'll start, I guess, with this, this bit of knowledge, I guess. Um, it's important 
for me anyway, it's important to find someone that's not going to force and impose their opinion on you. Because whether someone does it in a negative or a positive, they're still doing the wrong thing. If I'm, if I'm screaming and shouting and you're saying you must change because what I believe is fundamentally right, so you need to do it, that's as bad as me saying, no, nah, just do badness. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So I think it's finding someone that fundamentally that you can just get on a nice passive level with and a nice, um, who, who they can be quite neutral um, and who just want to connect with you, who don't want to force change. So I think that's been the first thing uh, upon my reflection is literally just meeting up with Roddy, for instance, who's just a genuine dude who just wants to connect. Mm-hmm. Because he's, he, he's good people, you know, and mm-hmm. you, you share similar, similar life experiences. So that was something that was quite important to me. Is um, I can physically see myself in you um, as you're a mixed race person, as you've got Scottish heritage, as you've got Caribbean heritage, and now you're also in the same field and you're doing stuff that I would like to do. Um, and you're just a sound dude. <laughs> mm, <laughs> mm, mm. So then we're on a level. So now we're on this level where there's no judgment. So now I'm feeling open and comfortable. Um, so I guess those would be, that's my kind of first uh, things I'm looking for, for when I'm, when, I'm, when I'm sort of testing, or can this person be my mentor? Yeah. Um, you know, have they been really open and can you just get on a level where you do feel comfortable? Um, and then I guess from there, it's uh, it's really a case of, for me anyway, uh are they not only going to help improve the specific area, but are they also going to help enrich my life as a whole? Mm-hmm. That's super important. So, like, um, for instance, again, with, with, with Roddy, my first mentor, who still is my mentor to this day and so many more things, we met on a business level, but then that ended up developing me as a person, and that ended up developing actually me going away and researching my heritage and um, understanding where I've been to understand where I can go mm-hmm. um, so how I can live present it just led into like it was all this snowball effect interesting the, the yeah. business stuff was just a foot through the door mm. and mm. then it was yeah, yeah it just developed into a friendship and then yeah totally yeah, totally, yeah. yeah. I, um, and then you know because because I could see myself in him still keep see can still be see, see myself in him you know so uh, there were so many shared life experiences so many shared life experiences. I mean, like, from the obvious of, I grew up in a, a predominantly white area where I was the absolute massive minority. It's the same for Roddy. So then you have that connection. Mm-hmm. So then um, you often can have the same traumas. So now I'm I'm verbalizing my traumas with someone that's kind of been through it. Yeah, so, yeah. So he, he knows the exact same thing. He knows the exact thing to say. He knows the exact feelings that it promotes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, in the same way, he also recognizes and shares the same triumphs. So now we can resonate on that level as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, so then, yeah, because it's a it's a it's a uh, symbiotic relationship. So you're you're feeding yeah. him and he's feeding you. So it's not it's, yeah. yeah. That's the thing about mentorship as well is that people have this idea that it's just a one way thing. Oh, I have a mentor and I'm taking all this stuff from them, but actually, you, you're actually giving giving back just as yeah. much. Yeah, yeah. in yeah. your and like, so like that's one of the beautiful things that Roddy said to me quite early on. He was actually just like, and I never understood it until now, especially in the early days. He was just like, ah, oh, nah, me sitting with you, me mentoring you, you are my mentor as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's not like until like now I got to maybe a, a, a level of confidence, a level of maturity. I'm not sure what it was, where you can actually see, oh shit, like my mentor is now listening to the information I'm giving and I'm now becoming a role model for him. Mm, mm. He's coming to me for advice as well. And this mm. is this beautiful exchange now. Mm, mm. Um, and I think that's where it goes full circle. Yes, right? yes. It goes full circle in this beautiful way. Um, and then, yeah, so that's that's probably would be my, my standpoint. And I think it's it remains the same. It was the same when I met Tessa and she, you know, she um, she's my spiritual guide. Uh, it was the same thing, you know, really resonated with her, had the instant connection, um, loved what she did, stepped foot in her world, you know, did a bit of a, a chakra course with her, um, with a few people, and was like, you know what, I feel the benefits of this, I love the way you coach, I love the way you kind of can connect and get stories across, it's powerful. Mm. Um, mm. So then that was kind of, again, met up on that level. Um, and, you know, she, she's helped me through a lot of, a lot of things I've literally never, uh, I would have never told anyone, sort of thing, you know, um, and really helped me see it from a complete different standpoint um, and helped me visualize different aspects and areas of life if dependent on the decisions that I make. 
um, and it helps me understand why I make those sort of decisions mm -hmm. from a complete different viewpoint. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it's super important, man. Um, super, super important and holds uh, a huge just level. There's there's a huge, huge level of trust in that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think that's the key thing. Mm. Um, is, is, is uh, yeah, where's that trust coming from, you know? Um, and of course, I think it's also like important to recognize that there are, there are the people I've worked with, people that have kind of learned from and mentored from who it's literally just about that one subject. Yeah, like that very specific niche yeah. that's there. I guess yeah. it's like there's like levels to it. And I think even for me, um, again, like speaking to you and just knowing you allowed me to also see the benefits of it because a lot of this, when it comes to mentorship or even like, like I say, spiritual guidance and stuff like that, it's very difficult to put words to it sometimes because, I mean, it can be all seen as wishy-washy or like a bit esoteric. But, yeah. um, but for me, the way I made sense of it through you was in your action. Mm. It's because many people would say, oh, for example, um, the, uh, for example, the, their beliefs or practices were just not practical in the real world. It's like, all right, you believe in all this stuff, but well, it, it, for where I want to go and what I'm going to do, or just generally in the world at large, you're not, it's not like you're really making any progress. I can't really see the impact of it on you. And mm. for me, one of the biggest examples was like, so I, I met you in a very similar way. I, I think our initial connection was like business, right? I think it was like, what, two two years ago? Two, two three years ago almost? Longer now. Yeah, three almost ago. three years ago, right? And it was like, initially it was business. But then straight away, just when we just started talking, it was just clear that we we just we could just connect a lot more, like deeper yeah. than what business was. And I've seen you progress. And I've, I've seen the way that your mindset and your knowledge and this you know this whole sort of experience that makes you who you are actually applies to your real life and it's not just that it's mediocre like it's actually tangible stuff that you're creating right and you're manifesting all this stuff like i've seen you go from lg coaching and then you've gone to um the initial concepts of like life unlimited uh, when mm -hmm. you're gonna buy uh, that that um, space in Reading, remember you were gonna yeah. buy, buy the floor, and then uh, and there was also the uh, now moving to the sanctuary, for example, which is just pff, blown up, right? Mm -hmm. So it's almost like it's is that true expression of who you are that allows you to actually um, create all these things, and yeah, um, yeah and, and actually I actually want to move to the sanctuary because I know um, we've discussed this. Multiple times we've we've, talk, we've spoken strategy, we've spoken you know creative, we've spoken everything to do with the sanctuary, right? Mm -hmm. But I want to come back to the actual building part of the sanctuary. I just want you to just like, uh, <laughs> what what led what led to the sanctuary exactly? Yeah. <laughs> um. So like that. I mean, you pulled it really nicely. So like, I think everything. The 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 thing that we haven't spoke about there is the importance of having um. I guess the first of all, the importance of having Jack and what that represents. Mm. Having, having someone who is the ultimate level of friendship, the ultimate level of a mentor, the ultimate level of a brotherhood mm. that um, that you discuss these ideas, you implement them with. Like me and him laugh and joke all the time. Like for instance, last night we're up until three o'clock in the morning and we're just chatting through about life, about business, about the next building, about the next facility. Um, about what it really means, about the impact that it has. Like we've literally got a whole list of names, and you're on there, by the way. How does <laughs> uh, this, this, and this? Like, and, and we're and we're playing, we're playing these like in our, and this can be misconstrued, but we're, I guess we're playing the sort of puppet master in many mm, ways. Mm. Very positive, like, you uh, have to, to a degree, of course. We are the creators, right? It's still now tangible. So like we we did this a long time ago, where we had a whole list of names, and we had a whole list of impacts that we wanted to have. But it seems so far away, and now it's at the point. It's like okay, so they can just come here and to this facility where we're at anyway, and they can just connect and do this, this, and this, and that's also going to lead to that over there. Mm. Um, so I guess it's that same mentality. I think like to go back to the question, that's how it all started. Like we were just we had these wacky, we had these crazy ideas, and we we're also just crazy enough to do it. Mm. Mm. And that's the beauty. You're like so it all really started. I remember. Um, must have been about four years ago, uh, and at that point in time, you know, I was struggling. I wasn't making much money. Personal training. Jack was working and living on a building site, uh, and we were both in a place where, I guess, we were content but not happy. I mean, mm. we weren't fulfilled. Um, 
but we had a lot of ideas and we had a lot of vision and I'll never mm. forget I sat there one day and I was like I need a, I need to create something where I can basically get more clients and meet more people um you know we kind of went away with this and thinking and Jack comes up with um just have a fitness networking event you can call it net workout mm. Mm. that was the initial idea was net workout to connect people through their health and well-being and then also um then connect on a business level um and the mentality of it was that this business is essentially a social business that will help others, which is the most important thing. Mm-hmm. But that will also help us in our personal lives as well, and us in our business lives as well, because um, it will create more business, basically. Um, and then it snowballed, man. Snowballed like we did. So we launched that, did a couple of events, realized, actually, we can help people connect to their uh, purpose, because again, you know, it renders like very much corporate, et cetera, et cetera. You know, we, um, people just weren't very spiritual. Mm, no. uh, we didn't really understand much about spirituality. We didn't actually understand much about um, creating a goal uh, and then actually or goal setting a goal achievement. Mm. Simple as that. So mm. then we began to really tap into that world. Um, and then, you know, that was beautiful. And we had people actually understand like who they are, try and understand their meaning, try and understand. Um, what it is that they really want to be doing? Mm, uh, you mm. know, what is that? Their, what's their true calling? Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean that kind of again snowball that built up into so many different ideas. We're like, right, we could do, we could do the same for kids. We could bring in the whole sustainability angle. Um, we started developing that, and we, was, you know, we could do the same for companies. We really started developing all of these different touch points um, and ideas and strategies, um, and it was all kind of getting to certain stages. It didn't kind of have that breakthrough. Mm, uh, mm. and then lockdown happened uh, the ultimate uh, breakthrough <laughs> yeah you know, Jack and George were kind of so I was continuing working on that workout and the corporate aspect um, Jack and George were like we're just kind of just reconnecting I guess as brothers initially mm. um, and then this opportunity comes up in the in the warehouse uh, and Jack rings me and you know, explains everything that we could do and essentially uh, something that was always missing was that we didn't have a, fi- a fixed facility. That yeah, was. space. That's it. So we just mm. didn't have that space. Yeah, And then we knew our energy and we knew uh, our philosophy and our ethos from the years of um, understanding that we know that we need to align our purpose with with our life and our business and that's et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. actually redefining what wealth is. Um, and we knew we had we had the business, the, the philosophy essentially, of, the philosophy of net workout was what we was going to bring. Let's bring mm-hmm. people together and let's basically connect on a deeper level. Um, so we just knew having a building would allow us to create so many things within that. You know, we knew we could take the gym there, um, and then that would be formed into a whole new business. You know, we mm. knew that we could take a, create a, a, a photography studio or just a place to be creative. Um, and the space will be also dictated by the people that we meet along the way. Yes, yes. And they bring the energy. Mm. And then when that happens you're then no longer dictated on whether you're having a space or not. And they could just be duplicated. Um, you know, and that's the, that's the long-lasting impact. And that's essentially how it played out. You know? mm. It was like, look, we've got this warehouse. And then a week later, basically, I moved out of Reading. We had the warehouse. Again, we manifested that hard. So the key thing that I've definitely learned across the course of time is the power of manifestation. Like, I knew what about law. For real, man. For a long time. Because um, that was another big thing. I think law of attraction... And how to manifest things was the start of my spiritual journey, which really initiated me Jacks as well. Um, which then we got to the point where we we're just teaching others that. Um, so yeah, we were just just constantly creating, manifesting, creating, manifesting, and being natural with it, never forcing it, being mm-hmm. natural with it, meeting everyone with that kind of warm openness, and just creating a space for someone. Mm-hmm. In that sense, mm-hmm. you know, creating that mental space and emotional space. Whatever that individual needed, you know, can you create a space for them? Whether that be on a, on a business level, whether that would just be on simply a connection level. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I guess it kind of all snowballed into to where it is now, where um, we're no longer dependent on a space. Like we could go and we could just do an event. And, it's. Uh, and- I really love it, man. It's yeah. genuinely become a mindset. It's become an entity on its own now. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I I've seen that. Just I think. I came to the sanctuary, was it the first month? Uh, was like, I think it was after like a month after you guys moved in there. And I just remember seeing what it looked like and just 
it looked nothing like what it looked like obviously at the end but like it was just like you could just see raw potential there right like it was just it was just insane and every single time i came after that um i've got all the videos and pictures anyways i took so yeah. i'm going to definitely be sharing it with you guys to see that pro it's good to see the progression because for me yeah. i go through it and it's like the progression is, is insane like mm. every single time i've been there it's like and how you guys said like you know cutting up the the warehouse into different spaces and then mm. you try this here and it didn't work you move it over there like mm. it became like um it's almost like the, the warehouse became like you're playing like lego bricks right and yeah. you just got like lego bricks and you just like you just take it apart and then you just rebuild it somewhere else and you just yeah. take it apart <laughs> and you move it around and you can just like move things and i really like that and I, I think that was very very reflective of the mindset that you guys had was a very creative mindset and i, I think you, you hit the nail on the head it's not just about you know praying or wishing or you know like law of attraction trying to get things to you it's actually it's so so key that you take action man like i think that is where it then you know gets manifested or trained into anything that is viable is when you actually take action like you can think like humans you humans think all the time well, we're beautiful at thinking like that's just what our minds do so mm -hmm. good ideas are not like are not hard to come by like the, the average person on the street would give you a really good idea but i think it comes down to actually acting upon it and i think that's the yeah, bit yeah. where um, i really 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 do respect you guys and i think that's a big part of the bond that we have as well is that mm -hmm. um I, I'm always like around people like who are doers, and I think that also reflects a part of me as well that I like to harness in myself. Yeah, yeah definitely. I think it's like it's twofold, really. I guess and maybe less of a spiritual plane. It's that you got uh, goal setting. Everyone knows how to set goals, set smart goals, short term goal, long term goal, whatever. Um, you got goal setting, but it's not really spoke about goal achievement. Mm. And in this sense, is you got the law of attraction, yeah, where you can think, where you can uh, really feel. But you also, what's not spoken about is the law of action. You need to do the stuff. You need to literally live it. Yeah, you, you gotta do it, man. Yeah, like because if it hasn't, if you if you're not living it, and if you're not actually taking the steps, and if you can't do that, we're in it into where it is your lifestyle and where you do really live it, then you're gonna be, then you're gonna struggle, <laughs> and you're gonna really struggle. That's the way I see, um, I see these things because a lifestyle is your way of life. So unless your way of life, in our sense, and you're not your way of life isn't the sanctuary, and you wouldn't do this regardless, then you're then always going to be just working hard for it, man. Mm. It needs to be your way of life because that's when it's you never work. Mm. Mm. It never <laughs> seemed, seemed like that. It never ever seemed. Even the cold showers, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the cold showers every morning, man. That it yeah, never man. felt like work, man. It never felt like work. It was always, always felt very, very natural. Yeah, but, all a part of it, man. Mm, of it. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's the way I, I really see these things: is um, build it into a lifestyle and and and, uh, and progress, man. Because then it's when it becomes that effortless. Yeah, effortless. and that's yeah. that's the that's the that's the true blessing is when you're living an effortless life with your brothers and sisters. You know, for real. Uh, you know, that's that's different levels, man. That's different levels. I was going to ask. Um, so. Again, this is another thing that I really respected you guys for. And one of the biggest yeah. achievements was literally going to a completely new city and building a community during lockdown. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, for me, it's still one of the most insane like achievements like uh, anyone I know has ever done. So um, I just wanted to talk me through what were the what were the difficulties? What were the what were the biggest challenges you faced in building the community during lockdown? Yeah, um, I guess it was it was the stop and the start, and it was the um, it was the, the the best word I guess is the shutdown of certain things. That we used, you'd set up and you'd plan and you'd create something. For example, um, the gym opening. And creating events, and then the whole thing would just get locked up. Mm, mm. So it was just work finding your ways to work. Yeah, I see. Yeah, and I see. Finding your ways to kind of stay above, and sometimes go underground. And when you're going underground, do that in a fucking smart way. And then you know, so it was really finding mm, that. The, the, yes, yes. It's always it like a, it's a dance, isn't it? Because you have to leverage the the time. I know what you mean because I was able to come see you times like things opened up, for example. But then. Yeah. It's so short, 
So it's like you have to do, it's like almost like a, it's a sprint at that point. You need to do what you need to do yeah, yeah. at that point right. because you know it's not going to last long. I think. Yeah. Mm, mm. And, that, that, uh, and again, like, I guess this is going to be quite contradictory to what I said. But in all honesty, it wasn't that hard. Like, because lockdown was in, for us, it was a blessing. And the, and the, and the whole virus, it was, a, you know, it was a blessing. You know, obviously it's horrendous for millions of people around the world and continues to be and will have a long lasting impact but for us it also was a blessing because people people needed that space mm. whether that was the space of us and our, us as people or literally a physical space people needed it mm. people literally needed to have that touch point of nah this is the way of life this is reality like you can still do your thing you can still have community you can still have connections so it was um, in quite a connected but i guess distant area that we found ourselves in um it was just the epicenter to bring everyone together you know because the park the park has the pockets of every single individual that you could imagine everyone kind of knows one another mm. but when the when when the kind of dust settles and the park's gone or whatever um where do they go they don't have that community hub so mm. it would mean it was it, it it was easy for us because clearly it was needed it's needed in any area that you go. But very think, true. Very, yeah, very that's true. Something that I've, like, that's something I'll take away from now like in life and something that I've really learned. If you can go to an area and you can just serve people, you'll always be all right, no matter what it is you do. Like if I look at, um, if I look at going back to Reading, when I first moved down there, it's the same situation. I didn't know anyone, didn't, didn't have any connections, none of that. But I just went there with the sole purpose. I'm just going to serve people. I'm literally just going to go and I'm going to serve these kids. And then in the world that we live in, you'll find out a way to monetize that. So, all right, cool. So I'm going to go coach kids and I get paid to coach. And I'm going to go serve people in the gym and get them healthy and then I'm going to get paid to do that. Um, so it just becomes quite simple. So for us, it was, all right, let's go to, let's, we have this space, let's open up the space to serve people's needs. And those needs are going to chop and change. We can have a, a general idea of what those needs are going to be based off our skills mm -hmm. um, and based off our knowledge and based off our personal needs and wants as well. Um, but yeah, that, it, to be honest, that, that's, that's all it was. Open up a space that will serve people and serve the community and do good things. Yeah, no, <laughs> honestly, I think that was it. The, the, the fact that it was a social enterprise in the sense that um, it, it gave people the opportunity to really, first of all, like you said, connect to express themselves and to also yeah. do good things, like you said. I think more of the biggest things i think was the clearing of the park like just yeah. how that happened man like yeah. <laughs> that yeah. in itself like everyone came down together and did that like it's like it's like once in a while you guys are like going down cutting down the 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 the, 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 the rubbish picking all the stuff bro that, that place was a shithole like <laughs> you guys completely cleared the whole thing out like and, that, and that's the beauty like that that whole thing and this is the beauty of energy so the way i look at it is like the whole the sanctuary and everything here started because of two connections for me and Jack personally because of me and Jack yeah like that's literally now like hundreds of people were now connected mm. um, you know we were just that's that's our personal start point and with the club with the park for instance mm -hmm. this this is where the action comes in man just to stay true to what you what is you said it's simple like me and Ali you were talking this is the first night I ever met this brother and we're chatting 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 we actually had the most enlightening conversation we're like alright how do you reconnect Africa beautiful conversation it was amazing um, and the next day we're just like look that, that same evening was like oh should we clean the pot tomorrow and we're like yeah let's do it just me and him so we open up he's at the door boom 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 I open up the warehouse door and i'm there ready to go and it's just me and him initially um and by the end of the day there's literally 20 people and then now then it continues to the point where me and Ali aren't even there doing it anymore and other other people are involved people that we've never met before mm. so that's the energy of just uh there's something that needs to be done. Take action on doing it. Mm. And do it. Like, mm. Without signing crude, I saw something amazing on Instagram, an awesome guy that I follow, um, Miguel Energy. And he just said, now we're in the age of shut the fuck up and do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, if, something needs to, if something needs to take place. No, that's so true. No, I think you that's a very simple way to say it. <laughs> straight up. Straight up. It's because it's, it's the only thing that's right. It's the only thing conceivable. Like, you just need to do it. Like, if you look at I mean, like we talk about politics and government and this and that. Like, if we want them to change and if we want them to create something that's going to help, let's say, uh, empower black people and empower ethnic people, 
Um, but they're not providing it, then we need to provide it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Know, we can't be reliant on that. Can't, not, can't keep on singing the same song over and over nah, again, man. Just yeah. just <laughs> For real, man. For real. Like, and then in that in the uh in the doing, don't worry about whether don't worry about the outcome. Don't worry about the product of it. Because in the doing is the process. The process is always more important. Yes, the yes. The process is the outcome. <laughs> <laughs> very true no I agree with you I agree and that's one thing I've definitely learned recently is about uh, I think a lot of um, stress and a lot of anxiety comes from um, focus on the outcome too much like oh. if you focus on the outcome which already by default is unpredictable because yeah. no matter how good a driver you are I mean the, the chances of you crashing is still there like so it's not so you just can't keep on focusing at the end of it you have to the process you have to focus on the process yourself in the yeah. now and I think that's what that's where the, the the bulk of the learning is I know that the environment and nature is just a I mean yeah. it's just a it's, it's a hardcore part of you and your ethos and everything that you are even even the gym as well i loved that gym because it was biophilic it was just like the connection with nature was just right there and mm-hmm. i know that's something that you've um that, that you take on as a principle so how have you found nature you know um how have you found nature to be to be such an ally to you in all in, in all ways of life mm. um it's been for me, it's been uh, it's been under understanding of this is the natural way of life. Mm. It's like it's it's helped me be, it's helped me become, it's helped me become. And understanding, I guess, the biggest thing was the key word is the connection. Is connecting to nature understands that your connection to yourself is intrinsically tied to the connection of nature. Like we literally have the same DNA as a tree. When we when we exhale, the tree inhales, mm. and vice versa. Um, so with that, I think that's been that instant grounding, and that's helped me to um, <laughs> diminish any anxieties, mm. any stress. Mm. Uh, in many ways, any kind of emotions, um, any any traumas, it's just allowed me to completely let go. Uh, and then when I'm in nature, is when I'm at one. So. That's the that's that's what it's done for me. I guess it is the short answer. No, so, no, I uh, hear that because yeah. you're you're literally surrounded by it all the time. I know, even during lockdown, you're doing those um um you go for walks as well. I mean, we did we yeah. did that walk that was basically yeah. how long was it? <laughs> it was a long walk, but you're so uh, I I love it as well. I, I mean, for me, it's always about the exploration side of things. Yeah. Uh, I think nature allows me to explore my mind because sometimes I. I, I can get so like caught up in just ideas or just like designs and systems and all this stuff in my head. But I think when I'm in, out in nature, there is a there is a reality to the ideas in your head. Um, and I guess you, you come face to face with your mortality. It's like there's these are huge trees right there, and they're, they're, if they fall right now, they're gonna crush you. Like you can't really push it. So like yeah. there is a there's a sense of like humility you get when you're out in nature and a, and a sense of calm as well. Yeah, it gives you a lot more focus. Yeah, so, I mean, there's just so many metaphors that can be taken. Like, mm. for instance, nature. Nature for me is always uh, the prevailing victorious one, and that shows that it's the only natural thing, it's the only organic thing. Like, for instance, there's a there's a plant growing on top of the tree, on, on top of the um, on top of the house. So, like, it just kind of shows it doesn't matter what what happens if if it's given the right circumstances and settings, it will come out on top. It will literally grow within mm-hmm. any any angle, mm-hmm. any space. Um, it will always find a way. Um, I mean, oh, there's just so many. There's just so many amazing metaphors that it can be taken. That's it. Um, right. You know, so it's uh, it, it, it's uh, yeah, man. It, for me, it's uh, it's the space. I think when I'm in nature, I think that's when I realise that this is heaven. Because if like if we look at it like this, right? So let's say heaven is a space in um, in the universe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we're in the universe right now mm-hmm, mm-hmm. if you're in a sp- if you're in a space that gives you utter peace and gives you utter connection well then you're in heaven so anytime you're in nature that's when i feel oh i'm truly in heaven here. i get that i get that this is this mm-hmm. is the space of heaven uh and then if we believe that god is within us which it is and god is in all of in everything whatever you call the god uh the god being yeah whatever god means to you yeah yeah 
then um, for me as a god, um, I am a, a product of this nature, I'm a product of this consciousness. So now I'm just kind of spending time in my home. <laughs> for, for real, man, yeah. for real, for yeah. real. Yeah, no, during, during lockdown, man, it was, yeah. It, it I think it saved my life, man. <laughs> Straight up, man. Like, I can honestly say, other than maybe like the first week I had when I was actually not in nature and I'm, I'm watching the news, that was the only week I was worried about the whole virus and all of this. And I was like, nah, I need to go out. And I just spent hours and hours in nature mm. and watching the news no more. And then it was, oh, shit, this is real life. Mm. Is real mm. life. Mm. Um, yeah. So that's that's pretty how I would describe it. Nah, I hear that. I'm looking forward to many more walks with you, man. And I know it's been a while since we've since we've met physically, and it's gonna be happening very, very soon, man. It's gonna be happening very, very soon. Um, I like I like how we always like go away and we always come back, and it's like we've just <laughs> we've like yeah. lived like a thousand lives, and then we just come back and we meet together, and then just the, the synergy is there, man. And then we just like share and you know yeah. create something new out of it again. Straight up, man. That's the you need to be. That's that's when you're aligned with your brothers. Uh, truly, you know, when you can, we can tap away. We can go do your thing for a couple of months, and then the cross trains mm-hmm. come back in like mm-hmm. this. You know, mm-hmm. so yeah, just got. Uh, I hear that, man. man. Yeah. I hear that. Really, really good to see your beautiful face and your <laughs> sexy smile, man. Um, <laughs> I'll, I think I'll, I'll I'll leave you for now, and um, <laughs> we'll definitely yeah. catch up again, man. Um, yeah, just let me know when you when you want to chat, man. I uh, literally yeah, like, bro, let's do it, man. Let's yeah. do it. There's a lot. There's a lot that needs to be worked on now. I know you're ready for it now. You're up, yeah. yeah? yeah you're awake. Yeah, yeah. Up, Good. Man. You've got my attention, bro. Let's do it. Just literally, just chuck something in asap. Let's get yeah, it going, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Blessings, man. I love that. Blessings, Blessings man. <laughs>